be in the Lord's house with uh, all of you uh, this morning. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Exodus 19 with me? Exodus 19. This morning, continuing uh, through our study of the uh, covenants, the historic covenants that God has made with his people, uh, leading up to uh, the revelation of the fulfillment of those covenants, uh, we're looking at the Mosaic covenant today, the covenant that was made to Israel by Moses, through Moses, the, the, the ministry of Moses. Uh, and uh, I wanted to, to get through the whole thing this morning and kind of continue what we were doing, uh, just going through one covenant uh, every Sunday morning leading up to Christmas. Uh, but it looks like I'm going to have to split this study between this morning and tonight. Uh, the Mosaic Covenant is not just outlined in a small number of passages uh, as the other covenants we've studied. Most of them are uh, relegated to a single chapter or two in the Scripture. But the Mosaic Covenant is covered in the entirety of the Law of Moses. Uh, from Exodus through to Deuteronomy, the covenant that was made to Israel is told to us and the, and the law of that covenant. And so this morning, I'd just like us to look at one aspect of that or, 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 or one half of that covenant that was made. And tonight, I want us to look at how that covenant is fulfilled in the person of Jesus. And so if you have your Bibles in uh, Exodus 19, we'll begin reading in verse 3. The scripture says, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded them. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you again and we thank you for allowing us to worship you together. Lord, we thank you for uh, all the goodness that you give to us, uh, that Jesus Christ has fulfilled all of your law on our behalf and has gotten us all of the blessings. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to uh, remember what a great feat that was uh, this morning, Lord. We pray that uh, you would be in here in this service with us. Lord, that you'd help us to understand your word. Lord, be with those that uh, may not know you in here or that listen to the message later, Lord, uh, that you would uh, be with them to uh, draw them to your son, Jesus Christ, and that they would have faith in him. Lord, we pray that you would be with each one of us as we go out. Help us to witness Christ in this season. Uh, give us opportunities to speak your word uh, in the capacities that we're able to, Lord. And we ask that you would be faithful uh, in honoring uh, that ministry, Lord. Lord, we pray that uh, you'd be with our missionaries and uh, those that are not with us today, Lord, to give them comfort and strength. Lord, help them to know Jesus Christ and his sufficiency for them and his love toward them. Lord, we pray that you would be with our leaders, uh, that you'd help them to uh, minister in truth uh, as they're called to be uh, your servants, Lord, to rule under you. Uh, Lord, help them to know when uh, they've sinned and that they ought to repent. And Lord, help them to know when they have an opportunity given to them by you that they should take. Lord, we pray that where we've all sinned against you, that you would forgive us. Lord, that you would sanctify us through your truth. Uh, Lord, that Jesus Christ would dwell in each of us richly by his Holy Spirit and cause us to uh, do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, we pray that uh, you would send him also quickly to the earth and uh, restore the whole world to yourself. And it's in his holy name we pray all this. Amen. So we've come to the Mosaic Covenant, the covenant that was given through Moses. 
And as with the other covenants, I'd like us to first note how gracious this covenant was, that it was full of the favor unmerited from the Lord. In verse 4 of our passage, we read, Ye have seen what I did unto Egypt, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. The first way that this was gracious is because God graciously brought out his people from Egypt. He called Israel out from among them. This was given by prophecy to Abraham before any of these uh, people that were brought out were born. Uh, it was done fully graciously. Uh, in Egypt, they were an oppressed people. In Exodus 11, verse 13, the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they served them, uh, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. Not only did they serve in harsh conditions, but they were killed in Exodus 1 verse 22. And Pharaoh charged all his people saying, every son that is born ye shall cast into the river and every daughter ye shall save alive. Uh, the Egyptians by the order of Pharaoh killed the children of the Israelites. And the Israelites even in all of this, we read elsewhere, uh, enjoyed some level of uh, comfort or, or, or uh, camaraderie with the Egyptians. But later when they were brought out of Egypt, uh, they longed to go back to Egypt. They longed to go back and, and eat of the foods of the Egyptians and to, and to have their good things with them. Uh, they... Uh, even in their, their harsh service, uh, were a wicked people. Uh, they were a people that was overcome by sins. And yet, God redeemed them for himself. In Exodus 3, verse 10, Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Even then he called them his people that he had chosen, that he had caused to increase and had blessed them. In Exodus 5 verse 1, Afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. He said, Let my people go. Israel was his people. They did not deserve it. They, uh, again, were a, a wicked people. They were a lowly people. And God delivered them for his own sake. This deliverance that God brought culminated when they passed through the sea and were brought safely to the other side. In Exodus 14, 30, Thus, say it, uh, thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. The Lord delivered them. He brought them through the sea. And we read elsewhere that it was with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm that God delivered his people out of Egypt with all of his mighty wonders in the plagues and in bringing them through the sea. And even after that, when he provided for them in the wilderness, when they bickered against him, the Lord mightily saved them. He graciously brought them out from among their enemies. In 1 Corinthians 10.1, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. The Lord provided for them in, in all things when he brought them out graciously into 
the wilderness. And he promised again that they would be a people for himself. Ye shall be a peculiar people, verse 5 of our passage says, a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. He saved them. He brought them from Egypt for his own purposes, to be a treasure for himself. Not only did he save them from Egypt, but he promised to give them a kingdom and a land. In verse 6 of our passage, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom. He promised to give them the land that he had before swore to Abraham. Exodus 3, 8, I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, the same land that was promised to Abraham. He promised he would bring them into this good land and bless them there. Not only did he bless them a kingdom, a land, but power, authority in that land. As he said, he would bring them into the land of these pagan nations, the Canaanites. He promised that he would give them dominion over them. Deuteronomy 28, 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. He said that he would cause all their enemies to flee before them. He would give them power over them. That they their enemies would come against them in one way as a united force and they would flee before them in every other direction. Not only that, but we, as we just read, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. In everything that they did, the Lord would bless them. This is the covenant that God made with them, the promise that he gave to them that he would cause them to prosper in everything that they did. Just again, as we have seen, that all the covenants are a, a continuity, that they build off one another, that they uh, all go back to that uh, first promise that was made to Adam in the garden, that they would have dominion, that they would have blessing in the land, and everything that they set their hand to do under God would prosper. And not only this, but again, as in the garden, they would be called a priesthood. In verse 6, ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. A kingdom of priests and the whole nation would be holy, set apart to God. There would not be a person among them that was not called to serve as a priest. In Deuteronomy 28, 9, The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the, co the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways, and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. He would call them and establish them a holy people, a kingdom of priests as they obeyed his commandments. Every individual would have the right to serve God as a priest to him in whatever he sent them to do. Isaiah 61, 6, But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. This was completely different than all of the lands around Israel, all of the pagan nations. They only set aside certain people to be priests. They only said that a few people could serve God in this consecrated for Israel, 
the promise that God made was not that just a few would be priests, but that the whole nation would be called priests. In the working out of history, of course, we know that only a few actually served in this way. Because of disobedience, they uh, were not all able to serve God as priests. And this was uh, by the provision of God that he uh, permitted a few to. But the idea from the beginning and the promise was that they should all serve as priests, just as we see in the garden. Because all were made in the image of God, all were called to serve him as priests. Genesis 1.27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. In Genesis 9.6, for in the image of God made he man. He called all of mankind to, to come uh, and be priests. Uh, and so here he calls all of Israel that they were to be his priests. And so uh, all of this blessing from this covenant, and, and we could go through even more and see in detail all that God promised, the good blessings that he promised to his people through Moses. And to get this, in order to attain to this promise that he made to them, he gave them a law to obey. They could not have all of these blessings except his law be fulfilled. Look down in Exodus 20 and verse 1, the familiar passage. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Uh, just beginning the Ten Commandments. He promised all of these things in the last chapter. Uh, he told uh, Moses to go down and speak with the people and tell them uh, these promises. And then he begins his conditions, the law of God, the Ten Commandments. Jesus himself expounds on these Ten Commandments by quoting the two great laws of the Scripture. In Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. These principles, which are expounded on in all of the rest of the law, all of the law comes down to uh, the Ten Commandments and through the Ten Commandments to these two great laws to love God with all that we are and our neighbors as ourselves. And though it may seem that this is an easy law to keep, if we've learned anything from the last commandment, the covenants that we've looked at, it's anything but that. The generation to which it was given, all of this holy law, they fell immediately from God's commandments. We read in chapter 20 how God told them all of this law. He commanded it from the top of the burning mountain. And that they were afraid of God and spoke that he should uh, and, and, and petitioned that he should not speak to them anymore. And when Moses went up to the mountain to receive the law for them, they immediately broke his commandment in making the golden calf and in sacrificing to it. In Exodus 32, 6, they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings, that is, to the idol that they had made, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play, which is a reference to how they sinned against one another, that they, they uh, uh, rose up to play, they uh, dishonored one another between themselves, 
and uh, how they sinned against God in offering to idols. In 1 Corinthians 10.5, But with many of them God was not well pleased. All who passed through the sea, those that ate of his provision, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. They sinned against him in what they did, constantly bickering against him, raising up idols against him, and finally disobeying him when he commanded them to go and take the land that he had promised to them. Moses' own self also fell from the commandments of God in Numbers 20.12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believed me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. Even Moses and Aaron, the leaders of the people, those who were supposed to be closest to God, they fell. They believed not the word of God and they did not sanctify him in the presence of the people. And so in sinning, they fell from the promises that God made. And the penalty, as always, for breaking the law of God is death. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flock of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The punishment of the covenant made to Moses of breaking God's law is again to be cursed and die from the presence of the Lord. In fact, we have one of the clear statements of God's wrath against all those that break his covenant. Deuteronomy 32.22 says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischief upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. God's wrath against breaking his law is great, and none can keep his law. Not those to whom the law came, not those by whom the law was sent, and surely not us who read of his law from a distance. God's law here is most uh, expansively uh, explicated on. Uh, it takes four whole books of the scripture to get through all that God requires of us. It was a law that not even the Pharisees could keep. And so we see the plight of all mankind. Uh, that as many as are under the law are under the curse. As many as do the works of the law show the law written on their hearts. We are all under the curse of the law. And so this uh, morning, believers, that's uh, what I want us to, to see at the moment. And I'd like us to spend the rest of our time uh, this morning uh, just looking at a gospel presentation. Uh, we can't go this morning through all that Jesus Christ is uh, in the law. Uh, 
but we can look for a moment uh, at how we can escape this curse. Hebrews 7 verse 22 says, By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Why did the priests die? Why did the Levites pass away? Because they were sinners as we are. They were not able to save to the uttermost. They were not able to make a perfect atonement for sin. They could not attain to the blessing that is by the law and so for themselves, and so they couldn't attain to it for our sake either. They couldn't get us all the blessings that we see are given to God's people by the law. They died and they failed. But Christ, who did not sin, Christ who kept all of the works of the law, who by obedience, uh, by, uh, by, by his sufferings, by his death on the cross, he got for us all that we need, all of the blessing. And because he continues ever, because his life is forever, because he attained to the blessing of eternal life, by the law, he can give us that life and he can take our punishment on himself. And because he has power to lay down his life and power to take it back up again, he can stand before God eternally on our behalf, making intercession for us. Christ, who did not sin, earned the gift of life by obedience for us. And he took the punishment and curse of death that is on all of us. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I have called heaven and earth to record against uh, this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. I also set before you a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you will trust in Jesus Christ, know his forgiveness that's in his blood, and receive all the blessings we've talked about. Uh, not only deliverance from our enemies, but a place of authority with him, a kingdom of priests to be able to serve him, life everlasting to be able to enjoy him, all because of what he's done for us, because he kept the law on our behalf. Jesus said, I am not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. He came on our behalf for this, so that if any would trust in him, they would have everlasting life. And so I pray that if there are any in here that don't know him, that you would trust in him and know the forgiveness that's in his name. And... Uh, I just pray also that we believers uh, would remember until tonight uh, the gravity of the law. I'd like us to remember uh, our own lives, how we've broken God's commandments. Uh, if, uh, any, if, if any of us want to uh, go to uh, the Sermon on the Mount today, and study uh, even the deepening of the law that Jesus gave, uh, the requirements of God in order to be holy, and know that we couldn't do it ourselves, know that we've failed even today to do it ourselves, and remember that Christ did it for us, uh, that he did all the legwork in order for us to have life. And so I pray that we would remember that, uh, as we prepare for tonight and looking at how the law prophesied about Jesus Christ beforehand uh, so that uh, we can all be encouraged by this.
And again, if there are any that don't know Christ in here or that listen to the message later, I pray that you would trust in him and be saved. Uh, the scripture says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you and we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for the law, the Lord, that it is our schoolmaster, the Lord, that it shows us uh, that we have a need of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you that uh, you brought us to faith in him. Uh, we prayed it this morning uh, before tonight that Lord, you would work in the hearts of those that don't know him. Uh, Lord, any that have listened to this uh, scripture that we've read this morning, uh, that you would prick them to the heart. Uh, Lord, that you would draw them to him and that they would be saved. Lord, again, we pray for those that are sick this morning and are not with us. Uh, Lord, be with them and give them strength and comfort. Uh, Lord, help them to uh, help them by the uh, Lord sending them uh, messengers of your goodwill. Uh, Lord, that they would know uh, the fellowship that they have with you in Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'd be with our missionaries. Uh, Lord, be with our leaders in this land. Uh, Lord, be with each one of us where we've failed you to forgive us of our sins and to help us to serve you in a better faith in the days ahead. Lord, we pray that you would send Christ quickly and that you'd help us to remember his first coming and know that he comes again. It's in his holy name we pray all this. Amen.